From the Hard Rock Cafe in Toronto, it's Ed the Sock Live! All right, so uh, this week there was a lot of buzz on the internet because the Justice League movie released its new trailer, which Ooh. it's been hinting at. Um, hey. Why don't we play a little bit of that underneath me? Um, so this is the big Justice League movie that's, I don't know when the hell's oh, coming wait, out. this is the wrong one. That's the wrong one? Okay. Uh, oh, that's the wrong one too. That's the wrong one too. Uh, They're not labeled, so... Okay, it doesn't matter. That's the least of our problems. <laughs> All right. I think this is the right one. Okay, so uh, there it is, opening at some fishing village. And uh, Batman is talking to the fishing villagers. Oh, is he Batman or Bruce Wayne? He's here? Bruce Wayne, but here's the thing. He goes out recruiting people as Bruce Wayne, and then he's Batman. That's yeah, Aquaman. There. And Aquaman just looks like a grease ball. Like, how does a guy who lives underwater look so filthy? That's what I don't understand. You know, oh, there's the, there's the, the shot for the, for the women to make them all moist. Um, and here's the Flash. And there's Cyborg. And there's uh, Bruce Wayne again. And wait, let's go back to Dirtbag Aquaman. Any moment now. Barry Allen. What's there up? he is, at Bruce Wayne, recruiting the Flash, um, and letting him know he's Batman. Wait, Does he not know the purpose of a secret hair? identity? What? The Flash has emo hair? Yeah, the Flash, he's, all, he's totally emo. Why is Batman going great? Because he's old Batman. He's got a billion dollars, get some hair dye. And there, look, there's greasy, dirtbag, angry Aquaman. I don't understand how that's... Well, they took Aquaman from being this really nice guy in an orange shirt to being that... Dirty tattooed guy that you wouldn't let anybody you know go out with on a date. If you saw a picture of Aquaman on like uh, a dating site, you would not click that because he looks like he'd stab you in your sleep. See, you, re you remember the movie UHF with Weird Al? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All I see here is blue, so I'm thinking of him sitting in the chair. I'm thinking of something blue. So yeah. Something blue. No, like he's no got some red in his shirt. Oh, oh the, the his whole jacket. tone of the movie blue. Does well, that's the thing. Have an, a patent on blue. See, here's why right Superman isn't seen in the Justice League uh, clips because there's no sun. The sky is always dark. When you need solar radiation for your powers, you can't be in a clip where in a world where there is absolutely no sun. Every time you see the sky, look, it's it's me it's also messy. There's always shit in the air, like corn. Somebody blew up a box of cornflakes. That's there, look, look at that. That's Snyder's uh, trademark. Everything goes slow, dark skies, and crap in the air. How am I supposed to be excited about this? And you know the, uh, oh, oh, the funky music. Oh, look, here we go. You can talk to fish. Hey, drama, drama. That was a shitty ending. <laughs> all right, so that's the thing everybody's all excited about. I think people really want to like this so much that they're saying they like it. Like they like people said they liked uh, Superman or Batman versus Superman because they really wanted to like it. And then when you talk to them afterwards, they're like, "Yeah, that was shit." Um, I don't understand why DC has this idea that they don't. That there's no blue skies in their universe. No fun. They try to drop in some humor, but I'll bet the only jokes in the entire movie are the ones we just saw in the trailer because they added them afterwards. Yes, Liana. See, I think that this trailer, depending on who it's for, if you know who those characters are yeah. and, and have a basic sense of what's going on, there's some things that are cool there. The problem is if you don't know sort of how this connects and, and why the Justice League can... I didn't know that was The Flash. I thought Bruce Wayne was talking to some sort of hacker because he's in this hacker den. It's like, who's the hacker dude? Who's this supposed to be? I he's didn't the know it was the Flash. And yeah. so he like crackle and he did this. And then I'm like, where's Grant Gustin? Because he's the Flash I know. If you know who that is, it's kind of cool. But I was left behind by that. I didn't know who the character was. Well, here's the thing that left me behind. This business was Cyborg being on the Justice League. What kind of bullshit is that? It looks cool though. This is the first time that a uh, that the Justice League has appeared together on film, other than the challenge of the superheroes in like 1978, which was like a roast. All right, when it was crappy, Hawkman had foam wings. This is the first time that they're being gathered like in an epic fashion, and Cyborg is there. Cyborg wasn't a part of the original Justice League. Here, take a look. Let's take a look at the picture of the Justice League uh, from the movie. There. 
Okay, and now let's take a picture of the uh, show a picture of the original Justice Leaguers. There. Now we know why not Green Lantern's not there because the movie shit the bed. Um, but look, Martian Manhunter gone. John Jones, the Martian Manhunter, he's gone. In place, they've got freaking Cyborg. All right, Cyborg. And why is Cyborg there? Oh, by the way, let's show Cyborg's original team. Oh. I thought it was Iron Man from the. No, see, there he go. There, he's a Teen Titan. He was known as a Teen Titan. He was in the Teen Titan cartoon, and now he's in the Justice League. Why is he in the Justice League? Because of his skin color. They had to find a way to make it diverse, which I don't have a problem with. But why do you have to bump out the only other character of color in the whole damn thing? The Martian Manhunter. The Martian Manhunter is awesome. You see him on Supergirl. Yeah, there he is. Look, the Martian Manhunter. Awesome. He can like change shape and go through walls and stuff like that. He's like Superman with a big brow. And then, uh, he's, look, there, from Supergirl, the TV show, look how awesome Martian Manhunter is, how epic Martian Manhunter looks. And instead, they give us frickin' Cyborg? Cyborg, he, he looks like a character that was cool in 83. I don't understand why this character somehow is supposed to stand with these epic icons. It, not, to, not to, like, go back to Daredevil with, with Ben Affleck or anything, right. but, but remember when Kingpin was recast with Michael Clark Duncan? And Kingpin in the cartoon was, last I checked, a big white dude. I don't have a problem with that. See, it, neither do I, but then why not make, like, to do with Aquaman it. black? If you need to, like, make a cultural well, here's a, kind of uh, appropriation. Oh, by the way, I had but, this clip uh, in Spanish because I thought it was more interesting than the yeah, devil like, why not make why not make Aquaman black? Uh, why not? Well, here's the thing. They already had a black character they could put in. So, why not John Stewart, the Green Lantern. Most people were raised on the Justice League cartoon. They don't even know there ever was a Green Lantern who's white. That boring Hal Jordan. Here, can we take a shot? Jon Stewart is Green Lantern. Yeah. Look, is that not cool? Is that not badass? Bad, absolutely. And you know who Idris was Idris Elba wasn't busy you, enough. You know, to, know who was supposed to play him in the original Justice League movie a few years ago? Common, the rapper. Wouldn't oh. that have been awesome? You see, they already, they could have put Jon Stewart Green Lantern in there, kept in the Martian Manhunter, had two people of color, and not had to deal with Cyborg. It was just bullshit. bullshit. Like, he didn't really earn it. Maybe Black Lightning or somebody like that. But Cyborg? I can't stand this crap. Um, it, it feels rushed, though. I, I think for, like, the last ten years, DC on the whole has not put out a decent film. And once they saw how much Bank Avengers was getting, they rushed Justice League, gave nobody an intro or a backstory or a Netflix preview in order to get to know these characters, and they just tried to rush greatness. They go, oh, well, uh, Marvel's got the Avengers out. We need our Justice League out now. And they, they rushed everything into it, and it's the same thing. Like, the DC comics are great, the Marvel comics are great, but at the end of the day, the DC universe has just been rushed and it's it, it well they it make shows. great tv shows it shows marvel's tv shows are, sh are shit the netflix ones are hit and miss um but the dc tv shows are great except i can't stand arrow uh, so yeah, dc's that, that great with the tv first one was, yeah. i know but they, it, that was a continuation of the grimdark well the arrow was basically about. should have been called we don't have the rights to batman because that's pretty much what they were doing, was making uh, Green Arrow into Batman, which is okay, because in the comics, Green Arrow was a complete copy of Batman. He had an arrow car and an arrow cave, because that makes sense, because bats congregate in caves, and, and so do arrows. Money, yeah. Why didn't he call it the arrow quiver, where, you know, arrows are in a quiver? The arrow cave? Like, geez, what a wannabe. Oh, All right. I, I, uh, I think Cyborg looks cool for what he is. The number of times you have told me, don't judge the movie by the comic book. Wait for the movie and judge it on your own merits. And now you're doing this with Cyborg. He might be okay. Like, the problem with the Martian Manhunter is he's a telepath and he flies and he has all these powers. He's kind of a one-man show. Why? Like, they don't have Superman, but there would be a Martian Manhunter and that would pretty much be Superman. Like, well, Superman's gonna Superman come back from the dead. Oops, well, spoiler alert. Well, yeah, but it, a Superman and a Martian Manhunter can be pretty redundant unless you use Martian Manhunter. No, psychic it wasn't powers. redundant in the Justice League cartoon. Yeah. They just relied on his shape changing and intangibility more than his strength. Right, 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 exactly. They exactly. couldn't. The, the, the issue is respect. No respect for the Martian Manhunter. Do we have those early comic book covers? Yeah, look, look. Was, was Cyborg there to fight a giant s starfish? Where you, you had it yeah. right. What happened there? 
I don't know. Oh, that's the the image that disappeared before, and and now it's here for no good it's reason. The, and look, look there, Martian Manhunter was 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 Cyborg there to be turned into a living tree? No, it was Martian Manhunter. Martian Manhunter, he paid his dues. He deserves to be on the big screen. Not this frickin' cyborg character who was in the Superpowers cartoon briefly. Anyway, that's the top, but if we're gonna continue talking about uh, uh, clips that came out this week and controversies about superhero movies, what the hell is going on with Wonder Woman controversy? They, they released the, the Justice League clip and people and they were releasing Wonder Woman clips, which quite frankly look good, which worries me because Good, uh, good trailers for DC movies usually lead to shit movies. Uh, but there's people online complaining because Wonder Woman doesn't have armpit hair. Look, they saw that and they were complaining she doesn't have armpit hair. Like, that's what we need to see. First of all, she's not human. She was made from clay. So who's to say, like, that's the that's her origin. She was made from clay. She's a dreidel. Yeah, she's a dreidel. So why would a dreidel have underarm hair? And also, she's... She's a comic book character. She's supposed to appeal to lots of people. She's not there to try to push somebody's different agenda. She's not there to try to change beauty standards. She's there to be in a movie, to be Wonder Woman, and make money. As Linda Carter would say, the original Wonder Woman, um, when people complain about this stupid thing. Picture? Oh. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, oh no you didn't. <laughs> this is people complaining about that. Now, Leanna, you did some research and found out historically, actually, women would have had uh, had hair removal back then. Well, yeah, I mean, if if you are, and, and we don't know very much about anything about Wonder Woman yet, but she's essentially, you know, the whole aesthetic of the Amazons is ancient Greece, right? You have Ares and Zeus and all the Greek gods and all that stuff. And back in the day, like that, men and women both, removed their body hair not just the armpits like everything because of things like lice and mites in hotter climates it was more comfortable and so going back to something like 30,000 BC people removed their hair with like sharp rocks which like scraped off some of the skin as well it, it was just a, I've had razors like that it, disposables yeah, it, it was a health thing and so women of the time because it's set in like World War One yeah World right? War One the trends hadn't yet moved into the sleeveless dresses of the 1920s. And so th this sort of, it's right for her culture. It would have been wrong for a regular woman. So this is actually sort of a girl power thing in the context of the time that, you know, it's, it's her culture and she's not giving up that part of the culture. Also, I think that Wonder Woman with armpit hair would actually be quite distracting for most people because it's not, in the original comics. Yeah, so she's not... She put somebody in a headlock. I yeah. would just be like, oh. Oh, like wrestling. More of a statement, considering it wasn't there. Even pro wrestlers, by the way, shave their armpits. I don't, I don't even like well, guys with... No, I don't yeah. like seeing guys hairy armpits. No, Where's well, that I didn't invent manscaping in grade eight. I thought it was all me. No one has complained that Thor doesn't have any body hair, even though he's a Norse god, and they're all super hairy. How come right? nobody's complained like, that Superman has these unrealistic muscles? Because let's face it, if you're super strong, Muscles are built on resistance. Yeah. If there's nothing here that's heavy to him, how would he have those muscles? Okay? <laughs> why would Superman, why he's setting an unrealistic body type for men by having those giant uh, muscles? This, why? Because he's freaking Superman and he's not real. This annoys me about superhero things in general. That they always do this fake girl power thing of, oh, the women are just as super strong as the men. And it makes no sense. Okay, right? You've got a dude who's like, Five, like six foot something and all that bulk and you've got teeny tiny blondie there no matter if, unless she's got tactile telekinesis she is not going to be as strong as someone with similar muscle fiber with more muscle fiber you know superman would be stronger than Supergirl. Isn't the answer like it's science? Well, it's, they create these super intense stories about how it could really happen. And I don't like wrong. science. Superheroes, you know how yeah. Superman flies? Because he does. Yeah. That's all. I don't want to hear bullshit but it, science. But that's why I like magic. Like, why does anything happen in, in Lord of the Rings? Magic. Done. We can Yeah, stop. over. Go don't need an explanation. Don't yeah. need a scientific explanation of magic. Because yeah. the scientific explanations are bullshit anyway. And here's the other thing about Wonder Woman while we're at it. There was a whole thing a little while back about one of the Wonder Woman writers said that she's a lesbian. Yeah, there. Oh, no, you didn't. 
I okay. was on it that time. We are good, good, I good. I felt go bad about missing the good last Good going. One. Wonder Woman isn't a lesbian. You know how I know? Because nowhere in the mainstream DC Universe comics has she been a lesbian. That's why. Yes. First of all, she was made from clay. How do they reproduce? Who says she doesn't have a sex urge? Second of all, she's on a women, uh, an island of all women. You know what this also reminds me of? It's like when someone's at a lecture and they're like, with the author who wrote a book, and they're like, so the symbolism behind the blue shirt, it means there's this cultural appropriation, there's this strength. So, no, I just needed a, a color yeah. for the shirt description, and I thought blue was good. No, you're wrong. Uh, I wrote the book, and I just wanted a blue shirt. Like, yeah, it's all, it's all yeah. I don't have a problem. If Wonder Woman in the mainstream DC universe uh, was came out and was a lesbian, okay, she's a lesbian. But these people intuiting that she must be bisexual or a lesbian because she comes from an island of women, first of all, that's assuming that um, homosexuality is something that you acclimate to. Because if you're naturally uh, gay or straight, does that mean that all the Amazons would be somehow be lesbians? That wouldn't make any freaking sense. Also, like Leanna said, she's made from freaking clay. Okay? We don't even know she has parts.